Welcome back to our nation to our Pastor's Perspective Podcast. Where y'all know what we get to do, we get to sit down and talk with our pastor. We get to pick his brain and get his perspective on the different things going on in the world and the culture today. So, like always, before we start, how you doing today, Pastor? Doing good, Angelo. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Um, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. And giving us your perspective on the, the different things going on in the world. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, uh, recently we were we were in a setting. Um, where we were talking amongst each other and a couple other people. Um, and a conversation was brought up about um, one believer was was giving us a scenario of some things going on in, in his life uh, where he was having a conversation with someone else. Um, and this person happened to use a lot of profanity um, in, in his words. And He's, as a believer, he said that he can't take that. He he can't deal with uh, that type of that level of profanity when talking to someone. As a believer, he he can't. And someone else countered or or, or made a statement along the lines of, "Well, that's you're being judgmental mm-hmm. uh, as a believer. You're 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 judging." And so what I wanted to talk to you today about was the line, the, the thin line. Um, Between love and hate? Yeah, something like that. Okay, I got you. <laughs> um, as believers, um, because a lot of times I notice when you walk through the Bible, uh, Christ himself uh, is almost intentionally going around the unbelievers. He's bringing the unbelievers around him. Um, but as the world we live in as believers, we almost shun them away. Right. Right. Um, so that's why I want to talk Unfortunately. about where, where, where does that line, where is that line drawn between being judgmental and I guess accepting is the word I'm looking for. You can kind of help me with, with kind of where I'm going. Right. I got you. <laughs> I think that that's a really, really, really great topic. And I think it is. Man, it's it's so convoluted or it's gotten so muddy. The water's gotten so muddy on what it is that we're expected to do when it comes down to us being believers. I think the first thing we have to look at is what Christ said uh, when he was getting ready to leave. We, we oftentimes we talk about uh, the Lord's prayer, the Lord's prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not necessarily the Lord's prayer. That is the disciples' prayer. That's the prayer. That's a prayer that he put in place uh, to be able to kind of show us how we should pray as a model, kind of like a, a standard, an outline, a structure to pray. But then when you look at, as relates to uh, in John 17, what we call the high priestly prayer. This is this is literally his prayer before he was getting ready to uh, go to that cross, uh, be killed, murdered, uh, be dead, then rise again on the third day. During that prayer, he says, Father, I lead them in the world. I lead them, speaking of his immediate circle, those disciples that were there and the disciples that that were going to come and to follow. And then ultimately you and I, I lead them in the world, not to be a part of the world. And so that is our that needs to be our mindset that we're here, a part of this world. We shouldn't be uh, we're in the world rather, but we're not a part of the world. And I say that to say that that it doesn't catch God off guard that we're around individuals who don't know him, don't serve him, they use particular language, they do particular things, that, that, that doesn't catch him off guard. That's why he left us here. You alluded to Jesus Christ where yeah, the, the sinners loved him, you know, right. the people that we would classify as the sinners, you know, the, the prostitutes and the tax collectors and all those, those individuals. Uh, but I believe that we have to get to a place where we understand our role of being left in the earth. We've been left in the earth not to, not to be... Yes, to use biblical language like Paul in Romans 12, too, not to be conformed to this world, mm-hmm. but rather be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we're around individuals who who use profanity. We're around individuals who participate in all types of things that's not becoming or being a follower of Christ. I think that I think that we should we should we should understand that we're there to be a difference maker. But I think the the context of the question 
uh, more so was posed between two believers. It right. was it was okay. a it was a believer who was like, oh, all this cussing. And then there was another believer that was cussing every other word. It was right. cussing like a, a drunk Japanese sailor. Right. It was just, they just, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they were they, they were just using right. a bunch of profanity. Mm. And I think that I think that we have gotten this, and this is why I, my opening statement. I think we've gotten this so conscrewed because we say that only God can judge us. And you hear me say this all the time. You know, that was a famous song back in the day, uh, Brother Tupac, yeah. you know, only God can judge. Right. That kind of was a, a mantra, you know, mm -hmm. only God can judge us. And unfortunately, that mindset has bled into the kingdom of God um, in a way that where it's, 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 it's a true statement, but it's an incomplete statement. Okay. It's a true statement, incomplete. And I say it's true because the scripture says don't judge one another. And that is speaking more so along the lines of us being in a posture of where we are, you know, condemning a person's, right. um, you know, eternal state. You know, I, I can't say whether or not you are. Uh, you know, what you did this morning and mm -hmm. if you prayed last night or you prayed right. this morning, all those types of things. But also to to also to complete that statement, we also are called to uh, hold one another accountable. Mm -hmm. We're called to be able to know the tree. The Bible says by the fruit that it bears. And so I'm well within my my, my Christian duty of me being a brother in Christ and you being a brother in Christ to where if there's some some if there's some behavior that's in your life that does not reflect uh, who it is that both of us are supposed to represent. As a brother, we are our brother's keeper. So I'm supposed to ask God for insight, ask God for direction, ask God for wisdom on how to address that. I'm not, and, and of course, we can talk about this all day because there's people who, who have things or things that transpire and they just, they just come at people any kind of way, right. you know, and just say, "Oh, you going to hell?" and "Oh, right. you this?" and "Oh, you that?" and you, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you said that. that that's that's a that's a not the approach that I believe that we ought to have as being children of God, but it's nothing wrong with me approaching. There's nothing wrong with me speaking up. There's nothing wrong with, with, with one another, uh, with, with, with we as men of God or people of God, just period, for holding one another accountable. Um, for a long time, uh, especially, I guess, being on the outside, the, the, the view, right, comes when you, let's, you, you take that situation where you have one person saying, well, I can't take that. I don't, you know, as a believer, I don't want to hear that or I want to talk like that. Um, I think, and I guess it's especially for non-believers who then we, we, we hear that and then we, we say or we catch you when nobody's looking mm -hmm. and maybe you're doing, and maybe it's not cussing. Maybe you never use a curse word, but you're doing something mm -hmm. sure. that God might not approve <laughs> of, sure. right? Sure. So now it, it, that's what I believe a lot of times draws the, the the divide because you you almost now set a standard of you or you almost put yourself in a box to where you're telling me where well, you don't deal with that well now I'm on this side saying oh you don't take you don't do that but you do that right right sure, or if sure. I put a magnifying glass on all of our lives sure. I'm pretty sure there's something we can find sure that 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 God is not pleased mm -hmm. so how do we kind of find that that balance on well, I'm gonna address this, but you know, knowing that there's something in my something in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Something in my walk that God might not be pleased of, and and now we know that people look for that. Once you set that, once you throw it out there, oh, yeah. that you don't mm -hmm. deal with this because yeah. you're a believer. Now I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'm ready to. Find, oh, you got a cigarette in your hand, mm -hmm. or you know, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. right. right, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. I, th I think one word called maturity. Mm -hmm. I think it's maturity on on both ends, on the individual. Who is coming at the person? It's a it's a it's a it's a way that we ought to do that. Um, God puts people in our lives like Nathan, Nathan, who approached King David in his mess, had um, had committed adultery with Bathsheba, had Uriah killed, and all those types of things. Uh, many theologians think that by the time Nathan got to David, this a year or so had passed by, and David just chilling like nothing never happened. <laughs> and so God does have people in our lives that are that have been inspired by God and, or been nudged by God to kind of encounter us, to confront us. 
But when it comes down to Nathan or it comes down to anyone, when they approach us in that manner, it's never to condemn. It should never be to condemn. It never should get you to a place to where, man, I'm, I'm condemning you in a way to where, man, I'm making you feel like you're scum of the earth. Like you don't, how could you type of thing. Right. It's only with the mindset, the man, yeah, it brings about conviction. But it's also to bring about conviction that, that that's going to bring about conversion, to bring about some some righteous fruit, to bring about repentance, to bring about a change of heart. So I so I think that's one thing. This it needs to be my, my motive needs to be checked. Why am I doing this and why am I saying this? And I and I, I need to be saying this with the with the heart with the mind to win this brother to embedder your walk. And here's another mis misnomer. I could be the biggest devil in the world if I'm telling you truth. Truth is true, right? So, and I think that <laughs> right. here's, here's something we got to, you right. know, kind of get over this hurdle, right. you know, as believers, you know, as if we live in in this, um, you know, alternate universe. Like we don't yeah. have mistakes, or we don't mess up, or we don't have this or that. The the scripture said, "Let every man be a lie, but let God be true." Mm -hmm. So I could tell you something true. Sure, sure, it doesn't. It's not as effective if I'm a hypocrite. Right. Sure, it's right. not as <laughs> potent if I'm a hypocrite. Right. Sure, it's not. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't sink in your heart and your ears the way it, it should be because I'm a dirty vessel that's mm -hmm. bringing it to you. But the truth is the truth, truth. anyhow. Right. And I think that that's why I said maturity. Maturity on the receiver's end because we'll we'll write people off because of who it's coming from. And yeah, I, I get that. You know, that's our human nature because you know you can't be a wino. And you want to tell me about how to raise my family? Right. <laughs> right. You're telling me, right. get, won't you get off that, get off that, that bottle? Yeah, get off that yeah. bottle. <laughs> trying to tell. That's, that's, that's how that's how we are. Right. And Jesus spoke to that. You know, you got a beam in your eye. You got a little. You you, you bother me about the toothpick I got in my eye, but you got that big old telegram right. pole sticking out of your eye. Right. And, and and that that's to keep us honest. And I, and I get that. But at the same time, when we're talking about the things of God, the Word of God, I think that it needs to be mature. We got to be mature in a way to where. I can't I can't cancel you just because I don't I, because I don't I don't agree with who you are or I don't agree with your lifestyle or I don't agree with 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 the vessel I can't cancel I think when we when we do that that shows our immaturity on who it is that maybe God is sending He can use a donkey I know He can use anybody to be right. able to come and confront me on on, on who it is that that I, that I'm something I'm doing or something I'm not doing so that's one layer one layer is is saying that. The, hey, you know, I need to check my heart when I'm going to someone. And the other layer is I can't write somebody off just because I don't agree with with what they jump they got in their trunk. Right. But then I think I think the 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 last um, layer to it is, or the the final layer that I that I speak to, is that I think that I think that we have to all welcome healthy relationships to where I'm 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 welcoming when it comes down to me being held accountable. We live in a society, Angelo. That man, nobody can check you on nothing. Right. Nobody, nobody can, nobody can check us on anything. Like we, we, we've, we've, we've insulated ourselves in a way to where, man, even as fellow believers and fellow Christians, man, I can't, I can't, I can't say something to you that you know that would be, that would be taken in a way that I'm coming for you or I'm looking down on you or I'm judging you. But that shouldn't be our our that shouldn't be our mindset when it comes to being children of God. We we, we I don't know any other way to say it. We we're called to hold one another accountable, and and I, I I'm well within my rights to be able to do that. Now whether a person receives that, whether a person doesn't receive that, that's totally on the person. Uh, Jesus said, "Don't cast your pearls or swine." Um, I have to be guarded in my relationships and see if I already know you can't. If I already know you're not going to receive me, now I need to really kind of question. Why do I even bring right. this up? Why do I right. even say this to you in this way if I know you already have a difficult time receiving feedback, receiving crit uh, constructive uh, critique? You have a difficult time receiving it. So why would I even poke the bear and then right. then, then cry wolf when the bear <laughs> scratch me? Isn't that a little right. weird? Why yeah. would you cry wolf well, yeah. when the bear yeah. scratch you? Yeah, you went everywhere. Yeah, you seen that. that. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so but anyway, when I, when, I, when I do that, I, I got to be mindful of that. Um, What's your... Uh, take and what you just said kind of leads me to going from one phase of life to the next. So maybe I'm coming out of the world into the kingdom. So then my goal should be to just surround myself with believers. And then you 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 get to that point where you can you 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 don't cast your pearl to the swine. You don't uh, focus on I guess so much trying to convert 
because you kind of know where people's mind is at. You you kind of know people won't receive if it's, if people know your past, especially it's a lot harder for them to accept. Maybe you've changed. So what what's your take on be, getting be, becoming a believer, getting in the kingdom, and then surrounding yourself with believers, and then trying to stay away from maybe those that are are not believers, right? Not sure. going in those circles, not even going in those environments because you kind of already know the mindset. Right. I think that um I think that I I don't agree with with believers exclusively being around believers. I don't agree with it cuz that's not it, it's not it does it doesn't it's not consistent with the text when mm -hmm. you look at the whole whole scripture. I think the goal should always be the goal should always be where I when I'm becoming a believer I I am to get discipled and disciplined in such a way to where I'm able to go back and I'm able to to surround myself with these individuals. So I, I, let's go back to that's something I, I forgot to make mention of. We say earlier when we talk about, you know, I can't be around this particular type of people. I can't be around and I don't want to be. And that's the whole group of the, of, of the body of Christ that are just like that. I'm not going to be around them. I ain't going to hang with them. I ain't going to do that. I ain't finna, that's I believe that's not the right mindset to have because mm -hmm. how can we ever win them if we're never around them? Mm -hmm. How can we ever how can we ever present the gospel to them? If we just have, if we just have insulated our life with only believers, so that, I don't think that's the right mindset. So a new believer, a baby believer, absolutely, man, surround yourself around strong believers that's going to hold you accountable. What's right. the point of being around strong believers if I'm just going to let you do what the devil you want to do? do. Right. What's, the, what's the point? Mm -hmm. So and but we hold one another accountable. A, whole, a, a baby believer be around other believers that that they can. They can hold one another accountable. You can grow. You can develop your theology. To get in the Word of God. You can um, begin to kind of sharpen your skills when it comes down to you being evangelistic, with you sharing your faith, when you being you dealing with the rebuttals and dealing with the objections. I think that I think while I am while I am in my formative time, in my baby time, I need to be soaking up the Word, devouring the Word of God, and and building up my reservoir to be able to go back. So I I can't say. I'm not going to go back to my friends or my family or my community or the same type of people that I would have been around, the same clubs. And, and I say clubs, I mean, if, we, if you want to go gangster gangster, go out in, outside where the clubs are, go out there where the parties are. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 and people have done that. I've, I've shared with you before, when we, when I mentioned first started, we would go out to the, to the strip club right. and go all that. We're, right. going with, we're going where the centers are. Why? Right. We're not going to go <laughs> to the next church. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not going, we're not going to somebody's parking lot, you know, as somebody made a joke about let's just go down to another church and put the cars on on, on, on their car put the flies on their cars but no so we're gonna go where the, where the people are so i say that to say that whenever it is that we do that and we have that mindset mm -hmm. i think that i think that I, I i am to i am to go with the i can't i can't that's what i was about to say i can't say i'm not going to go because these individuals are going to reject they're going to object they don't want to hear it and all those types of things i think that is a built-in excuse never to share my faith that's a built-in excuse never to do what god has called us to do. he told us to do it mm -hmm. and so i don't want to get shut down cussed out door slammed in my face i don't want to be <laughs> called uh judgmental holy roller uh all, i don't want to be called all those things but this is god's method for individuals coming into the kingdom of god those that have been blood bought blood washed those that have been purchased by his blood he told us to go back we overcame him by the blood of the lamb the enemy we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and our and the word of our testimony this is what he told us to do he said take what i've done and go share it let your light so shine so that's god's method that's god's way and that's what we that's what we're supposed to do so absolutely i think a baby christian Baby believer should spend his or her time devouring the word of God, spending time with God, being built up in prayer, built up in all those um, foundational things, surrounding themselves around other strong believers. But the mindset should always be, and, and I guess the onus or the responsibility is on that mature believer to know, hey, Angelo, you hang around me, but the, it, we're doing this to help you so you can go out. This is why these other cults and run circles around us, all these Mormons and all these other individuals. They go run, out. Run, so yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they study with the intent of going out to combat mm -hmm. and going out right. to argue and going out to do this and do that. They run right. circles around your average Christian. Right. And we, we be hiding behind the blinds, right. open the door, <laughs> be avoiding them and all that stuff. See the guys at the corner yeah. with the newspapers. Yeah, and they come stuff. to you. Yeah, they come. They come to you. Because they've been, they've been trained. They've been conditioned right. to right. deal with to deal with you and I, to deal with right. objections and all that kind of stuff. But, but we as believers, what happens, Angelo, in those formative times, 
we don't never come out of our formative times. We never come out of our baby times. We saved and we satisfied. Right. We saved and we good. We mm -hmm. saved with just and and I, I think a couple of things can happen. I just I'm just satisfied with hanging around other believers, and I and I don't think I need to. I don't see the need to be able to grow anymore. I'm not trying to be no preacher. I'm not trying to start no church. I'm not trying to do all that. But it's just it's our responsibility as being believers to get to the place where we can be able to handle handle our own when it comes down to sharing our faith. So either we never mature in the way to where we can be able to go out or we just never have a desire to do it. Do you believe that that attitude um, of not uh, studying the word as these other groups do and, and diving into what we believe in, do you think that that leads to that attitude? We had a conversation some years ago um, and you kind of broke down the different belief systems where I was on the side of I'm gonna let God do it. Right. You know, <laughs> right, right. I can't do it, you know, right. and, and I guess and I was using my personal experience saying sure. I don't remember a man doing it. Now at a time I could not recall things that men said. Sure, sure. Right? But in my mind, I'ma let God do it. And sure. you kinda broke down the, 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 the different beliefs people believe that God should do it and we should do it. Do you believe that that's the attitude that we take on once we become believers and we don't make it a mission of ours to go out and share that we saying, well, we'll just let God handle it because right. we good. I, I, <laughs> I think so. I think that I think I think so, but I, I think again, I think that that's the that's the true statement, but I don't mm. think that's the complete statement. I think underneath that is it's hard work to do that. Right. It takes some discipline. It takes right. some time. And so if I'm saying I'm going to let God do it, you know, that's so much easier. Right. Let, <laughs> let the Lord do it. Let me right. I got enough issues on my right. own. I got enough trouble on my own. Right. I got I'm trying to I'm trying to stay straight myself. Right. Let alone trying to worry about right. bringing others on. So I think right. that yes, I think I think it's, it's 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 having a good biblical understanding that it is God that does it. No man can come to the Father except he draw him, John 6, 44. But at the same time, there's another verse of Scripture that says, if I be lifted up, John 12, 32, he said, I'll draw all men unto right. me. Uh, you know, uh, and so we can go back and forth with all right. these different right. all these different um, viewpoints. You know what I'm saying? Yes, um, one man plant, another man water, but it's God to give the increase. But I, I, but we all have to have we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. God is the one that's ultimately going to do it. God is the one that's ultimately mm -hmm. going to going to convert that individual. That's wooing that individual. That's calling and drawing that individual. But we have a responsibility. We have a role to play. And so uh, that's fine to have that mindset saying that God is going to do it. But then I have to also complete that statement of saying God is going to do it. Through me. Through me, right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> right. a, that's the way he's gonna do it. Now right. how, who, when, where, I don't know. But right. I have to be I have to be intentional in my walk with God to know he desires to do it through me. Right. Um, as a leader in the kingdom, mm -hmm. how do you uh view okay, so I guess the the everyday, uh, like I say, the everyday average Joe, we almost uh we almost level our sins. Mm -hmm. Right, and right, we sure. put them on different. Yeah. Sure. All <laughs> right, so uh, this person is doing this, and I'm okay with that. I ain't hurting nobody. I'm right. good, right? But then sure. this person might be doing this. I'm yeah. like, ah, we gonna hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. How do you di first? How does the Bible? What? How? What does God say about what we would call the small sins? Maybe a little white lie here mm -hmm. and there, right? right? But then this guy goes and uh, is a homosexual, right? How do we? How do we balance what we, you know, what we do, what we are willing to deal with and turn our cheek on and then what we're willing to confront? Sure, that's a good question. I think that that's our, that's our human nature. Our human mm -hmm. nature is that I never want to be as bad as the next guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's, our, that's our human nature. And, yeah. and yeah. That, <laughs> I ain't doing that, though. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. At least, doing. At least, I'm, not, at least I'm not. That's right. our human nature. And right. I think that. I think it's crippling. It's crippling mm -hmm. because the scripture is plain that all have sinned and all have come short of the glory. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says he that knoweth to do good and don't do it is sin. Mm -hmm. So there's no mm -hmm. big sin. There's and no little sin. sin. Right. It's sin. And and I think that needs to be our that needs to be our mindset. And I mean we have blasphemed the Holy Spirit, all that deep people and all that. I got all of that. Right. But, you know, if you blaspheme, there's un an unpardonable sin and all that. But uh, I got but but hear what I'm saying in the broad sense that that man sin is sin. And I, I think that's how, how God that's how God views, that's how God looks at it. And I think that my my being exposed to the things of God, me me being 
uh, me being in, in, a, in, a, in a fluent relationship with God to where he reveals things to us. He shows us things. So where As a baby believer, it was things along the way. I was saved. I gave my heart to Lord Jesus Christ. Had done a radical change in my life, a radical work in my life. But as a baby believer, I bumped into some things through mature believers. It's like, man, I didn't know that was a sin. I didn't know right. I couldn't do that. Right, right. Now, now the responsibility <laughs> is on me. Am I gonna keep on doing this right. and, and play and just play ignorant, or am I just gonna keep on? Or am I gonna right. make the make the necessary adjustment? So, of course, there is a there's a level of maturity. There's a level of growth. There's a level of, of development that all of us have to have to get to as we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. So, all I'm saying is, you know, you don't come into the kingdom overnight and know. Everything from top to bottom, from from in and out. But as I continue to walk with him, he reveals reveals things to me and show me things. That's why it's important that I and that I'm connected to a a word church, a church that is life giving, giving me the word of God. You've mentioned already twice about how we walk through the word of God. As we just walking through the word of God, we hear things, things that are revealed to us. We're like, oh man, I didn't know that, or I, I was thinking this way about that. I was thinking that way. That's why it's important to be connected. So as we do that, God kind of shows us and reveals us. So I think that I think that it's important to know that a, as we are walking with God, there, I, I just need to be cognizant or be aware of the fact that man, we're in this this process called sanctification. Sanctification just simply means the time in between salvation and glorification which just simply means i put my faith in the lord jesus christ and one day ultimately i'm going to be with him forever with no sin no nothing no whatever but right now in the middle i'm being sanctified and so the the, the scripture says that i'm washed through the word of god john 15:3, ephesians 5 26 we're washed through the word of god so the word of god sanctifies me cleanses me and not only that holy spirit on the inside of me leads me guides me john 16 13 all those different things he leads me and guides me the way i'm growing and i'm developing and i'm becoming and i'm becoming stronger in my walk with god so i think that we categorize things because that's our human nature we always want to be not as bad as the next right. person but i think that it's our individual relationship with god Meaning there's some things that God has shown me. He may not have shown you. There's some things wow. he's shown you. He may not have shown me. But at the same time, uh, there should be there, there should be a, a foundation across the board that lying is lying. You know, right. stealing right. is stealing. <laughs> you know, killing is murder is murder. Right. You know, and, and I think that that's, that's foundational. But as we continue to grow, if I don't ever get myself over to the things of God, I'm never going to I'm never going to even come have that even hunger or that desire to want to know what those things are. So I won't offend God. And I think that's the bottom line. And I'm, I'm going to be quiet because I know I've been talking a while. No, but you asked me with my perspective. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's the bottom line. It's not so much of, man, a, I can't do A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. It's not so much of, man, I don't want to, I, man, I, I'm lying, but I'm not in adultery. I'm in adultery, but I'm not in embezzling. Mm -hmm. It's not so much of that. My heart, here's maturity. My heart needs to be, I don't want to offend God. Right. And so whatever that looks like, embezzling, right. adultery, uh, you know, digging my nose at the light. Right. You know, I don't know. I don't know whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever you want to call it. There's always somebody that light. You know, they going in. Yeah, they going they, in. They, no, no, nobody they, looking at them. <laughs> somebody see you, ma'am. Somebody see you, sir. Get some tissue, man. So, uh, so, so I have to have a heart of not wanting to offend God. So that when I want to honor him, and when he reveals to me, I'm not going to talk to my wife any kind of way. Cause I want to honor God. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do something in front of my children. Cause I want to honor him. I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to treat you any type type of way or say something to you, but any type of way. Cause I want to honor God. So that's the bottom line. That's the difference between understanding true grace because a, a, a erroneous view of grace is I can just live how I want to live. God gonna forgive me. I'm gonna be straight. Mm. Just do what I want to do. God gonna mm. be all right. He gonna be good. And that's what I think we quoted. One of the previous episodes, Romans 6, 1, shall we just continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, I just shouldn't just keep sinning because I know God going to forgive me. But the grace of God has appeared to all of us. It teaches me how to live right. And so God gives you and I grace to say, man, I don't want to let God down. God has been so good to me. He's, he's, his, 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 his mercies are everlasting. They're renewed towards me every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And because of all of that, I'm not going to look at my life as, Big sin, little sin, or look at other people, big sin, little sin. I just don't want to, I want to honor him. I want to honor him on how I live. I want to honor him on how I approach you. What's your take on, or where do you think the belief of 
once saved, always saved comes from. Ooh, no, he did. <laughs> um, you know, because that, that and, and I the remember. The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scripture for it. <laughs> um, you know, that there, there is that. Um, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. So God will forgive me. And then you have, you know, you're not always saved. You can backslide. Sure. So what? where do you think that? That that belief uh, that 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 goes from. Oh my goodness! Why would he ask me this? <laughs> Probably one of the most controversial topics that, that mm. people been right, right. <laughs> that they've been arguing about. What uh, saved? Always uh, saved. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> it just it just it called a difference. It's called um, it's called perseverance of the saints. Mm -hmm. So theologically, if you, the the theological term is perseverance of the saints. So um, Jesus said. That um, once you're in my hand, no man can pluck you out of my hand. Not even yourself can't get plucked out of his hand. And so this is a theological debate that's been been going on for a millennia. You right. know, uh, so you have the big components to answer your question. Make sure I answer your question correctly, or at least answer your question before I go all down my little <laughs> my little trail. The thought comes from the scripture. Okay. How I, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. Once I put my faith in Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sealed until the day of redemption. That's scripture. That's Bible. The thought of an individual <laughs> individual backsliding mm. or lose, quote unquote losing his salvation, mm. it comes from the scripture. It comes okay. from the word of God. <laughs> and so you have different camps. Even that is just controversial. Right. That's what I just right, said. Right. But come on, we got, I, I, I wouldn't say nothing like that and I couldn't get back to you. But anyway, right. so <laughs> I think that I think that there's there's camps. You know, have you have a whole camp, whole group of people on one side. They have this whole little doctrine, uh, uh, total depravity, uh, un unconditional election, um, limited atonement. Uh, it's it's mm. a tulip. It's an irresistible grace, meaning if God calls you, God woos you. You can't tell him no. And then the P is perseverance of the saints. It's tulip. That's how you remember that. That's that's a that's a that's what they call Calvinism. But even the guy named Calvin, John Calvin, he didn't. He was, it was his followers that came up with all that stuff. He he came up with the teaching and all that kind of stuff with the 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 broad biblical view of it. Of that's kind of how his biblical look of soteriology. I'm not trying to be fancy or nothing like that. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to respond yeah. to your question. Yeah. Soteriology is just the study of salvation. So his his bibli his his view, his biblical look of salvation, man, man is totally depraved. There's unconditional election, meaning that God unconditionally chose us. There's limited atonement, meaning that Jesus died for only a select few people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> un un unresistible grace, meaning I can't say no. If God want me, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And then perseverance of the saints. That's his view of uh, of salvation. Mm -hmm. And so there's another side. There's another camp that doesn't mm -hmm. agree with some of that, if not all of that. And so my view is I agree with some of that because some of it uh, can be found scripturally and some of it is not. But I don't have to be in a camp to say, I'm not saying I'm a Calvinist. I'm saying I'm not an Ar Armenian. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm a Biblist. I'm a, I'm mm -hmm. a person that believes in the Bible. Right. So you don't have to put me in one side or another. So come back to your question. That's mm -hmm. why I said, ah, why would he <laughs> ask me that? Because it's so it's, it's so broad. And hopefully right. I'm not confusing anybody. Because I'm sure if I am, he gonna he gonna ask me he gonna ask me something. Next else. episode. Yeah. Next episode. <laughs> we're gonna be back. Well, Pastor, we had this. Um, but I think that I think that God did save us, Angelo, mm -hmm. for us to always be saved. Okay. God did say He saved me. Mm -hmm. He when He saved me in January. I, I, I can say January. I just like saying January. January. In, in January 2001, mm -hmm. God saved William Shakobin Nesbitt III for me to always be saved. Okay. For me to always be saved. That that's 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 biblical. That's what it, that's what it is. I believe that as He has saved me, mm -hmm. and that's His desire. That's His intent. At the same time, I have to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I have to understand. That there, there. Even, even when we talk about backsliding, uh, the scripture says in in, in Jeremiah three mm -hmm. that he's married to the backslider. Mm -hmm. And so, when an individual in our, it says this is our mindset when we talk about we talk about people who have backslid, and we're mm -hmm. saying that they're away from God, or they're going to be in hell, or they're going to be okay. they they no longer they no longer save anymore. But okay. it, he says he's think about it. He says he's married, married to, to the, the backslider. backslider. Right. How can he be married? Well, God, who we know how I feel about marriage. Right. I get my view on marriage from from, from God, from, from, God, from, from the absolutely. Bible. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me somebody he's married to, right, is going to be in hell, right? 
I somebody he's married to Ooh. is gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I ain't right, trying to yeah, go there. No, I got but, you. but 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 I guess what I'm what I'm saying is I'm I'm living beneath my my privileges. I'm living a, a defeated life. I'm not I'm not being who God wants me to be. I'm not I'm not maximizing. I mean, so a person who's backslidden in their heart or in their lifestyle is an individual that's just away from God. And so, you know, which ask ask a, which ask another question. You know, which I ain't, I ain't going I ain't going there. So I would say to you, Angelo, that that view, whether a person is saved, eternal, I believe it's God's desire for all, for us to be saved and to be sealed into the day of redemption. But I I wrestle with 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 stopping there mm. because I also understand man's free will. Right. I wrestle with even though I can look biblically and this is where we have to be as the people of God we can look at we can look at scriptures that are diametrically opposed. Well, one scripture says I'm sealed to the day of redemption. Then another verse of scripture say that man I, I can I can taste of the heavenly mm. fruit, taste of the heavenly gifts, and then a dog returned to his vomit and all these different things. So I can look, I can look in the same Bible and sometimes from the same writer, the same author, the same book, sometimes the same chapter. And one verse will say this and another verse will say like it's mm-hmm. diametrically opposed. But then that's where as believers, we, we have to stand in tension and say, you know what? Let God be the judge of this. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer. And I'm going, I'm going to preach um, as a believer. I'm going to strive and I'm going to live in a way to where I, I don't want to offend God. I'm going mm-hmm. to honor God. I'm going to bless him. I, he saved me. He has renewed me. He's refreshed me, revived me, all of that. But I'm going to honor him. But as a pastor, as a leader, I'm going to preach a standard. I'm going to preach that you need to follow God. I'm going right. to preach that, you know, that, 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 that there's something, that's something yeah. that we need to do. And you don't, there's nothing that we do to become saved. And there's nothing that you got to do to just necessarily keep yourself but at the same time, I believe that there's a place of sanctification. There's a place of free will. There's a place of me saying yes repeatedly. There's a pl- there, there, there is something about what Jesus said, come unto me. Come out from among them. There's, there's an action that I need to take and something that I need to do to make sure I stay in a posture that's honoring God. And hopefully I'm making sense. <laughs> if, if I'm not, I'll come back around. But you asked me a big question, yeah. and that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big question. Yeah. Uh, well, no, and it comes from uh, just – just knowing that you have those different beliefs. And I remember uh, a couple of years ago when I kind of was first getting into the church, you said something and you were preaching that you said, even the demons believe is one God. Yeah. Sure. And when you just hear that, it's like, Oh, well, well, if that's the case, <laughs> right. what separates me now? Sure. Then? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If, 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 if the demons believe what I believe, then now the only thing that could separate me from the demons is the way I live. Sure. Not so much just the fact that, Sure. I believe in, in exactly. God. So. Exactly. So, again, I think we made mention of uh, talking about orthodoxy and orthopraxy. Orthodoxy is just having good, sound theology, mm-hmm. just saying you just know you what's know. right. <laughs> you know. But practice, can you can you live it out? Can you can you do what you need to do? I think that's a perfect example that where to mentally ascend to something. And there's a lot of people that say that a check in the box. Yeah, that, yeah the, uh, I believe in God. Check. I believe in Jesus Christ. Right, check. check right. I believe he died. Right. Check. I believe right. he rose again. Mm-hmm. Check. But, okay, you you can't check these boxes off mentally, mm-hmm. but then don't ever allow that to take root in your heart and, and affect your life the way you can live it out. So that's what separates us from demons. That's what separates us from any other thing in God's creative order is the fact that we, we, we not only know it, but we practice it. Mm-hmm. No, before we go. Uh, and I think we talked about this just before we go. Uh, yeah, a couple, uh, maybe a couple of seasons ago. I'd like for you to um, touch on it again. How we just went through different scriptures of the Bible that that reading this could lead one to believe this, and then reading this, the same person, it could lead them to believe something else. Um, and knowing that God is not the author of confusion, but do you believe that? He has the word and has the scripture set up so that we don't have it all figured out, that we don't think that I know this, 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 that he has it in such a way that we'll always have to, even after being saved we'll, and, and being a believer for 20, 30 years, that even after that, because I hear people now 40, 50 years in, in the kingdom and they still say they're learning new things about God. Do you believe that that's why that, he has it that way so that we'll always be dependent on trying to learn him, 
and you know just just explore new things about them. That why we can never get, you know what I mean. Sure, never sure. get it all the way down pat. Well, I know, I know this about God. Sure. I know this, I know that. I think a part of that is is that I think that of course, uh, man. Paul said, "I have not apprehended. I have not gotten there. I have not made it. I have not arrived." So we 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 press toward the mark. Um, Paul also said in First Corinthians, "We know in part." So there's just some things we just don't know. There's some things we won't be able to understand. We won't be able to fully understand the Trinity and fully understand how to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And all. There's some things we just won't fully understand how Jesus was 100% man, 100% God. So there's some things we won't be able to fully understand. We have to receive them by faith. And here's the thing, receiving it by faith. Some things are, 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 are just... Act, just giving access to those of us that are believers. Uh, and so if I'm a child of God, uh, or I'm, I'm not a child of God, rather, there's some things I won't understand. I can't carnally discern. The book is, the Bible is not a book that you just can approach and just right. get some facts out of. You're reading a, a man was swallowed by a, a fish, swallowed right. by a whale. What is this? Uh, right. Noah put these people on the ark. And, and some things are just discerned and understood. Uh, not only by faith, but also spiritually. When I have the Holy Spirit, then God gives me illumination on what has been written and what has been spoken, those types of things. But also, Angelo, so I think that, yes, man, we're never going to be able to figure out God. We're never going to get to the bottom of the barrel. We're never going to exhaust the text. We're going to be in heaven in glory still uh, uh, trying to understand his splendor, his right. majesty. That's what makes him God, and we're not. Right. So at the same time, I do believe that I think some of that is on us. Some of that is our... Our our lack of approaching God's word His way, I think, uh, as our lack of having true um, biblical hermeneutics, where we can be able to go to the Word of God, as Paul says, and rightly divide the Word of God. We've we've been we've been we've been mistaught in so many different ways, where we just feel like we just go to the Bible how we want to go to the Bible, and approach it how and we pr- want approach to, approach it how we want to <laughs> approach it, and see it how we want to see it. There there, there are. There are there are some things that we can't wrap our minds around. We can't grasp. But at the same time, I think that some of our division on the same verse where you get one interpretation, I get another interpretation, is as our our poor efforts in approaching the text. That where I, I have my preconceived notions when I come to the text. This is what I've always taught. I've always been taught this, or this is what my pastor told me. This is what my mom and them said. So I got my preconceived notion on how I'm approaching the Bible. And regardless of what somebody say, no, nah, this is what it right. is. So <laughs> right. I'm not going right. to change. Right. I'm not going to be moved from right. what it is that I that I have my my preconceived my preconceived notion. So I think it got a lot to do with our 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 approach on the Word of God. And so we have to be willing to be able to go to the Word of God in a way that where I'm not reading into the text, I'm not reading into the Bible. But I'm going into the word of God, and I'm literally saying, Lord, speak to me. Open up my eyes. Right. The psalmist says, Psalm 119, I think it's verse 18. He said, open up my eyes, and I might be able to behold the wondrous things that's in your word. So I got to go to God's word every single time with, 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 with asking him to give me a fresh pair of eyes. Right. That way I can be able to see and to be able to hear what it is that you desire for me to be able to hear and to see. But as long as I go to the word of God with my, I'm already knowing what it say, I already right. know what this means, <laughs> I'm going to be limited my understanding and so uh, and, and then some some of my limitations some of my handicaps have been set in place with just as the way we always did it this is the way i always approach the word of god I just can't just i can't study god's word the way i want to study god's word i can't approach it jesus himself went to the word of god and the bible says that he he he, he opened up the word of god he literally a, a exposed the word of God. He a, he expounded on the word of God in a way that where after his resurrection, Luke twenty four, after his resurrection, he went and he un, he and he unpacked to those brothers on the way to Emmaus how Christ was seen in the law, in the prophets, in the Psalms, and all that stuff. It literally says he ex, he expounded on the word of God, and so we have to take an approach as well on learning how to study and learning the word of God in a way to where whatever the text says. That's what it says. Whatever, whatever, whatever the text, whatever the text says, is not always what the text means. And so, mm. only only way I'm going to mm. get that is through properly understanding. Can't be in a corner somewhere by myself. And I, this is how I believe, and, and this is how I think. <laughs> that's not that's not how the way it goes. So there's no excuse that truth and love, because man, we have um, not only not only do we have uh, we systematically walk through 
uh, passage of scripture, verses of scripture. We give you the scriptures. We give you the definitions. We unpack this and that, the Hebrew, the Greek, the original language, and all those types of things. Probably not to the level of nobody else, but we're not we're not called to do it right. level of nobody else. We do it the way do it the way in our the in our, and love way. Uh, our way, the way <laughs> we can do it. But at the same time, I think that we have we have these classes, school of ministry called mm-hmm. Students of the Word. All it is is twelve classes that teach you how to study the Bible. So there's no excuse on 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 not knowing how to approach the Word of God. The Bible says, "Study to show yourself approved." A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. And as I always say with every school of ministry class, if you can rightly divide the Word of God, you can wrongly right. divide. It. So <laughs> I think that our division comes from uh, many different wrong, things. Wrong. Well, thank you, Pastor. You're welcome, Angelo. Um, you know, it's always interesting because um, I've heard many people say, including you, that you can literally reread a, a chapter in the Bible and get a new revelation each time. Yes, it, sir. But you have to approach it like yeah. that, not as, I read this already. Sure. I know what it's going to say, right. but you got to be open to getting a new understanding. So right. it's always exactly. interesting. And I know we use that word revelation it, um, loosely, and I know mm-hmm. what you mean when you say revelation, but just for all our egg heads, for the people in the back, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I believe... The revelation that God has revealed in his word, he's already revealed to us. The 66 books, they call it the canon. And there's a whole other episode, so I'm not trying to yeah, go there. because I was so, not. <laughs> so, 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 so you're about to ask what the canon, what the canon is. The canon is our 66 yeah. books. That is, okay. the, the canon just, is a word that just means rule. It just means order. It just means that there were certain things in place that the, the individuals that God used to put our Bible together, they had um, what they call a test of canonicity, meaning this is going to, these are the rules that we're going to put in place to see whether this book or that book gets put in our sacred text. Okay. So there's rules. We just, they just didn't grab Bible, book, books of the Bible and put it mm-hmm. together. So there's rules. So was it written by an apostle? Is it, uh, is it, is it dynamic? Meaning is it written, uh, is it, does it come alive? Those types mm-hmm. of things. So there's different rules. It's like mm-hmm. different five tests of canonicity. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to go there. <laughs> if you don't want to go there. But anyway, so the canon has been closed. The revelation has been closed. Genesis revelation, that's it. And I know we use that word revelation loosely, and I know what we mean when we say that. But when we talk about going to the word of God and read the same story, same scripture, same whatever, we speak in more so of illumination, mm-hmm. meaning God illuminates the text. So it gives me another way of looking at it. It gives me another application. Mm-hmm. The, 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 what God revealed is done. It's done. It's, what it right. says, it says, Jesus will. That's it, that's right it. there. But right. I mean, that, that's what it says, and, and and throughout the text, through the however many Old Testament and however many New Testament, sixty-six. I am not going to try it because I don't remember if it's thirty-seven, twenty-nine, or what, whatever it is, uh, thirty-seven, twenty-seven, whatever it is, thirty-nine, twenty-seven. The the, the 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 books is what it is. But God will give us the um, illumination when we go to the Word. And I do it all the time, and people. That's one of the greatest compliments that I get. People say, "Man, you." You teach this. You preach this like this is the first time you've ever taught it or, or preached it because that's how I approach the word of God, as if God is going to say something to me fresh, say something to me new, and he gives me illumination. He gives all of us illumination so we can be able to to understand. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. <laughs> he want to say something else, but he's no. going to wrap it up. I got you. Uh, uh, and again, thank you, Pastor. You're welcome, Angelo. Uh, for giving us perspective. And please, everybody, always remember, don't feel left out. Um, you can always chime in. Uh, on these conversations you can always pitch different subjects different topics that you would like to discuss with pastor um just send it to the email below um you can remain anonymous if you would like if not you can get a shout out you can get called on the show however you would like to do it again just send your uh send your subjects your questions your topics to the email below and like always we'll be back next week here comes the church here comes the church peace out